today, as we tape this program, it marks the 100th day in office for President Joseph Robinette Biden. Last evening, President Biden delivered his first address to Congress, laying out his agenda for America. So Mike, many people have been surprised by the progressive nature that President Biden has exhibited during his first days in office. Even progressive Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeted that progressives should be satisfied with the Biden agenda. So how is President Biden doing? I, I think he's doing well. Um, I think he's you know, walked into a very challenging situation. I think he's actually been clear in the, in the measures he's been trying to take. I think he's fo focusing on how do we re-engage the middle class? How do we provide resources to be able to restart the economy? Um, I think he's doing a good job. I, you know, and I don't think people should be surprised that he's a, a little more progressive than people had anticipated because I think he signaled that through the campaign. Um, and so, and I think it, start, it draws a, a stark contrast to um, where we've been over the last four years. The other piece I would put out there is, and it's interesting, and I think the, the initiatives he's proposing are, are very um, costly initiatives. And yet when we look at the amount of money that was spent over the last four years, and arguably to, to, to um, uphold the top 1% or 4% of, of wage earners in the country, um, at, least, at least these dollars are looking at a, at a broader cross-section of America to, to re be recipients. Mike, Mike, you just really glossed over a huge mountain of debt that we're talking about. Well, yeah, but that huge mountain of debt that we're talking about was unfortunately, you know, from a, from a cyclical perspective, put in place by the previous administration. Uh, but, but the proposals that the, the President Biden has been offering, certainly the two, the two plans that have been uh, initiated, and now the families plan that, that was proposed yesterday, certainly those are all new dollars. They have to come from somewhere. And well, the question we, is, we, where? We could, we could, we could not, Sorry, go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say, and, and these would be ongoing programs, so certainly the family program, uh, as opposed to sort of one shot or, you know, you know, a single initiative like the stimulus program. But, but, if, but if we look at the tax program that was put in place for the, from the previous administration at the very beginning, and we look at the challenge that that is facing and the people that that's benefiting, that will have a much greater impact over time than the, than the initiatives that are being put forward by the Biden administration. And by rolling back a portion of that, you basically cover most of the costs that you're putting forward in, the, in these new initiatives. Well, a 40% capital gains tax is uh, far more than quote unquote rolling back uh, the, the Trump I, I, I don't, I don't, increase. I don't disagree. Yeah. I, don't disagree. I, I would go back for just going back to where we had been previously. So um, I'm yeah, not that, saying but that, yeah, the elimination, that's the proposal, the elimination yeah. of like kind exchanges in uh, real estate in commercial real estate transactions isn't go that's been in that's been in place since 1922. That's 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 more than a rolling back. The change the change in the uh, on on the estate taxes on what you're what you're able to deduct when you die. That's going to that's going to hit hit middle middle Americans, small business owners the most. Not just farmers, but small business guys who will own their business 100%, then all of a sudden they're going to their their kids are going to get taxed because those businesses don't have a basis. Yeah, they in start particular, from nothing. In particular, those tax changes are absolutely devastating to small business and job creation. So, you know, we talk the, the idea is well $400,000, but the capital gain of a businessman who, are, who is selling a business or a business that ends up into an estate that ends up bumping above $400,000, that's the reflection of a sure. lifetime of work. And, um, and, I, and, and I don't disagree. And, and I think you're at a point where you're looking at, you know, at, as a former legislator, you gotta, you gotta, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, if you put a pro proposal on the table. If you put something out there that's not paid for, people say, oh my goodness, here's something that's not paid for. If you put something out there as a straw man to say, here's a way to pay for something, oh my goodness, here's a, I can't believe you would do that. The reality is that anything that's going to pass is going to be managed, is going to be compromised, is going to be put back into some middle ground. And I think the fact that he's put something out there that at least says, here's a way to do it. I don't agree with all the things they put out there, but at least puts a marker on one side that allows a conversation to happen to say, I think that's too much, or I think that goes too far, let's pull something back to the center, but I think, which I think is where ultimately you'll get to. But at, le at least there's a plan that says, here's a way to do it, which engages the conversation as opposed to st uh, the rhetorical standoff. So uh, Mark, one of the things that uh, 
uh, uh, candidate Biden uh, uh, talked about a great deal was about unity, bringing the country together. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell pronounced the first 100 days of the Biden administration as a huge disappointment and accused the president of breaking his campaign promise to bring the country together. So how is the president doing on unifying the country? Well, the challenge that, that he faces is that we are very much in a 50-50 or 49-49 country. Uh, 50, literally in the Senate, 50% in each, 50 in each party. Uh, and in the House, uh, Republicans reflect 49%. It's a very, very narrow margin. Uh, majority of the governors are Republican and majority of state legislatures are Republican. Uh, as you described at the front, uh, he has led off with uh, proposals that make the AOC and the squad very happy, that are really much more uh, of the progressive with the justice wing of the Democratic Party. And it has not shown that balance uh, that moves to the center. You know, uh, maybe this is a negotiating play, but uh, taking the president at his word, uh, he has certainly started from a far more left-wing uh, perspective than those people were hoping that he would move to the middle uh, are, are, would have expected. Well, I don't know any Republican who, who thinks that there has been a, a reaching out to the other side to bring to bring uh, the the other side, the conservative movement, to, uh, uh, into into the fold. In fact, just the opposite. I think they the the Republicans feel under attack at all levels of, of government, and uh, it's it's. And, it, and, is, and is there an initiative? Is there an initiative that you can think of that you would identify that a Republican would would come across the aisle and say, "I'd be happy to work with you on this." Because that's the challenge I've seen is well, they, they've, you know, sure. Tim, Scott, Tim Scott offered a bill last year on police reform, which was which was ignored. And so, infrastructure. Yeah, there, are, there are lots of yeah. things that the and Republicans will work on. Clearly, on infrastructure, there's there's potential common ground for a more focused, just on traditional infrastructure, uh, that it has the potential of uh, compromise. And, and I think and I think the reality is that. This will get you to a place where um, we, this will get you to a place where we now have sides that can begin to negotiate to get to a place that gets the compromise, which is what we used to have, which is how you get there. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have to wrap it up because because Carolyn's flashing the the pink card at us. So you know, obviously, th this this discussion is only in its infancy. After a hundred days, we'll have to see how it how it plays out. Stay tuned for parting shots. <laughs>